this afternoon. This is another one that we were really looking forward to. Bruner and Warner. And Bruner ranks second in the nation across the board as of this moment. Now that won't likely remain the case after he was upset Friday night by Lucas Davison up at Northwestern. Jacob Warner, number four in the country. Sophomore out of Tolono, Illinois. A big chance for a bounce back here from Bruner, no doubt. He's 20 and three on the season. Christian Bruner and Jacob Warner have split this matchup one and one, dating back a couple years ago. Back in 17, 18, Jacob Warner losing to Christian Bruner, 10 to six, and then Warner taking one last year. It's Christian Bruner 6-0 at Big Tens. So a bit of a tiebreaker here. Another match, or another matchup, I should say, that we probably won't see the last of. Ninety-seven is an interesting weight class in the Big Ten. It's it's pretty top heavy. You've got Colin Moore. These two gentlemen here, the the second half of the field not as strong as a lot of other weight classes in the Big Ten, so performing well at Big Tens is, is key to get an automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Scoreless after one. Warner looking for an underhook, and he will they'll run out of bounds, and Bruner gets called for stalling. It looked like he stepped backwards and was trying to hip toss, got called for stalling for it. He's very, very one. particular about moving towards the outside of the outside of the the circle. Even though from where we're sitting looks unintentional. Same thing that we saw with Dylan Lighty. It looks unintentional. Not the way the referee sees it. Good single there from Bruner. He saw several times Friday night in his loss to Davison. He got in on good shots, but was unable to finish them. He's just Flat and lifting Warner here needs to close it off, and they go out of bounds. Warner picking up an 8 3 decision over Willem from Indiana on Friday. So, both of these guys, well, Bruner looking to bounce back, I should say. Shuck from Bruner, trying to create some separation, and he shoots off of it. Another single, and another sprawl from Warner. Good use of the left arm by Warner, staying away, creating separation of his own, and he backs backs up to his feet. Boilermakers need this one, as Thomas Panola has not had good luck yet this season against Cassiope in the heavyweight spot that we'll see next. And a stalemate is called when Bruner had a pretty good body lock. 20 seconds remaining in the first. Shot attempt by Warner goes begging. Scoreless first period here, but not without uh, without action. This one has been every, every bit as good as we thought it'd be. We've seen action out of both of these guys. and Maybe maybe we've seen some questionable calls in both this match and a couple other matches, but I think I could speak for Tony Ursuline when he'd probably say those don't make up 32 points. For sure. Rolling it to his feet. Bruner trying to return. He will give up the escape after 10 seconds. So one nothing the lead for Jacob Warner. Hey, 
Warner changing levels pretty good, keeping Bruno guessing. Bruno with a nice double. Able to lock his fingers as he slides back up. Warner doing a good job of getting his hips to the ground. And a quick stalemate called there. Bring him back to the middle since that's the way they were going to end up anyway. Quick ankle pick attempt there I by think, Warner. I think Warner got caught with his weight shifting back a little bit. And maybe surprised himself that he actually caught Bruner's ankle there longer than he did. He might have learned something from that. Now Bruner commits to a double, switches it to a single. He came in deeper than he has the last couple shot attempts. Has to get back up to his feet. Warner with an underhook. And his entire bench trying to coach him. There he goes with the double hooks and out of bounds they go. No stall call that time. Thirty seconds remain in the second. Bruno kind of a half-hearted single attempt there, really just to create separation. I think. Imagine we'll see the same thing that we saw in. The the Lighty Lighty Kemmerer match. We're going to see Bruner take down, get a quick escape. All of a sudden, we're back to back to neutral. Back to neutral as Kemmerer is going to go off with a blood time. Warner eight and excuse me nine and two on the year. Tended to with actually both men having their noses tended to. You notice uh, some some gauze tape on Bruner's face. <laughs> the poor guy's had a cut on the bridge of his nose for the last two for, years. Yeah, I was gonna say that has to have been a year, at least a year, probably two. Every time it almost heals, it busts open again. So he doesn't even pretend anymore. He just well, puts, the guy never stops wrestling. Always busy in the off season. Or what is the off season to most people? Right. Needs an escape here, and then the next takedown will probably win it. First things first, though. Bruno needs the escape. Great and job. Warner takes him to his back. He's getting a count. Great job by Warner, just sinking his weight back. Four near fall. Not a very difficult move, very technically sound. It just don't do too much, just sink your weight back, and eventually you'll draw your opponent down, and that's exactly what he did. Turned it into four back almost, points. Almost a, a judo move, use your opponent's weight against him. Right. And just like that, real separation. 5-0 in favor of Warner. Very deliberative cover there from Jacob Warner. Sort of dictating the, uh, the pace there on the restart. Smart move. And the wind completely out of Bruner's sails now. Out of bounds they go. Bruner looking to his corner, see if maybe one of his coaches has an idea of what he can do here. There's Obviously, this escape, first and foremost, is the most important. He's had a couple decent shots. Obviously, Warner has been able to sprawl out and get away from him, but can't do anything until he gets out. Warner hits a roll, comes through with the escape. Now he'll try and get to work himself, 5-1. No riding time. Wasting too much time. Warner looking for the hit. The hit toss. 
Bruner. Bruner maybe was trying to get one of his own there, trying to turn Warner's hip toss into a toss of his own. And just like with Lighty, desperate men uh, do desperate things. That's true. And uh, you put yourself in a position to score big, which there, in turn, you get scored on. 7-1 right. for Warner. And Lighty, uh, excuse me, <laughs> Bruner now escapes for 7-2. They will battle to the Does end, have these a, two. a second of writing time, too, so a shot here would be a major. And it doesn't look like it's going to happen. And he stays out of danger, and he will get the win over Christian Bruner, a weekend he will want to forget.